This happened to me right before last Halloween. I wasn't on good terms with the owner of my apartment. The place is in pretty bad shape, and the fact that the owner refused to fix the issues like the water leaking in the kitchen made me want to look for another place to stay. It didn't take long, and after two days of browsing the internet for the perfect apartment, I found it. Immediately, I called the owner. Hey, I'm interested in the apartment, I told him. Um, yeah, that sounds great. There's only one problem, he told me on the phone. Please don't tell me there's a leaking pipe in the kitchen, I replied. Oh no, nothing like that. I'm actually out of town for a week, but you can come on by and take a look at it, he told me. Fast forward, and after about 15 hours of dealing with the leak in my kitchen, I finally arrived at the new building which I hope didn't have those sorts of problems. As I was standing outside, the building looked deserted. It had three floors, and as I walked up to the third, where the apartment was, I didn't hear any noise, nor did I see anyone. It looked like the entire place was empty. I got to the door, and a sticky note was stuck to it. Call me when you see this. Signed, Todd. That was the owner's name. I called him, and he said that he had reached a decision. Since I wanted to move in right away, he would let me do that. Also, he told me about the whereabouts of the key. It was hidden under the plastic plant that charmingly decorated the seemingly deserted hallway. I took out the key and opened the door. As I made the first step in, I heard a noise coming from the apartment right at the end of the hallway. It sounded like some sort of banging, but I could only hear it for a couple of seconds. I didn't think twice about it. I was too excited to see if this new place is going to be okay, or am I about to start looking for an apartment all over again? I got in, and I wasn't disappointed. Not bad, I said to myself while walking around the house. Yeah, it wasn't anything special, but it was clean, and I had a lot of space. The furniture was okay, and most importantly, everything was dry. No leaking pipes this time. The next day was Halloween, and since I loved the holiday, I decided that I needed to go to the store and get some candy for the kids. But as I took a look at the time, I postponed the trip until the next morning. I was really tired. I had the worst sleep that night. I kept having cold sweats, and I had a feeling that something was lurking outside my door. I even opened it a couple of times to make sure that no one was there. All I felt was a chill as I looked down the hallway, but nothing else. So I blamed it on being in a new place. The next day, I set my new apartment up for Halloween. Candles, cobwebs, and the works. As nighttime came, I was ready for the kids to arrive. I hope I didn't buy all this candy for nothing. I said while I waited with a huge smile on my face, but as the minutes and finally hours went on, I realized that no kid would come and trick or treat in the building. I opened my apartment window to see what was going on outside. Lots of kids, accompanied by their parents, were simply walking past my building. Maybe the fact that I was the only apartment with the light on made them think the place was almost deserted. I went back inside and turned on my TV. I guess it'll be a boring Halloween. I said while changing channels left and right. All of a sudden, I heard someone knocking at my door. Trick or treaters? I said to myself while becoming more and more excited. I got up, grabbed the bowl of candy, put on my plastic devil horns, and opened the door. Hello, I said, but shortly I realized that no one was there. I looked left and right, and there wasn't any sign of trick or treaters. I know I heard someone knocking at my door. I said, while being confused. I got back inside, put the bowl on the table, and sat back on the couch. Again, I heard banging, and of course, full of hope, I went back to the door. Just as the last time, no one was there. But as I looked around, I heard banging coming from the apartment down the hall. So that's what I heard, I said to myself. But a thought popped into my mind. Why don't I go and introduce myself? There was only two people living in the entire building. Why shouldn't we know each other? I said. As I was walking down the hall, I felt it was getting colder and colder. There weren't any windows open or anything like that. I knocked on the door, but no one answered. The banging noise coming from inside. I knocked again. Come on, I know you're home, I said to myself, but no one answered. I decided to try a third time, and if they're still not going to answer me, I would just quit. But before my knuckle touched the wooden door, it opened. 
on its own, apparently. Hello? I said, while standing at the door and looking around. Again, I heard the banging. It seemed to be coming from the bedroom or something. Hello? I'm your neighbor from down the hall, I said, while taking my first step into the apartment. The place was kind of creepy. It was filled with all sorts of photos on the wall. The banging intensified. I walked towards the place where the noise came from. Hello? I asked while knocking on the door. I didn't want to open it right away, but as soon as I knocked, a growling noise scared the shit out of me. What the hell? I thought. I opened the door, and what I saw left me speechless. Right there on the floor was a man, shackled in chains and with a muzzle on. The man had bloodshot eyes, bulging veins on his entire body, and cuts on his arm. Are you okay? I asked without knowing how to react. The man just stared at me and started to bang his head against the wall. That was the banging noise all this time. I tried to get close to him so I could get those chains off his wrists, but as soon as I made two steps forward, I felt an electrical pulse on the top of my head and everything went black. All I remember is waking up in my bed dressed in pajamas. What happened? I asked while getting up. My head hurt tremendously especially at the very top. Then I suddenly remembered the guy in the apartment. I rushed there, opened the door, and there wasn't anyone. The place was completely empty. No photos, no furniture, and especially no people. I hung out there for a while in hopes of finding some clues or something about that guy who looked like he was in so much pain. But as it turned out, the place looked like no one ever lived there. I never knew what I saw exactly. I even called the owner and asked him about that apartment. He said it has always been empty. I don't know if he was lying or not, but one thing was certain. It was the weirdest Halloween night I ever had. Holes and pumpkins, spooky things everywhere, darkness and candies. Halloween was here. My best friend Lisa and I went to my uncle's place to spend the holiday there. We've always loved Halloween. We love to play pranks on people and go on adventures. The first kind of adventure was five years ago when we were 13. Lisa, the smart one of us, brought up the topic of walking around dressed as skeletons to scare everyone in town. The looks on everyone's face as they ran for their lives was amazing. I almost burst our bubble from laughing. It was too hard to control. So many adventures followed after that the walk to the most dreadful mountain, the search for a missing magical bag, and going to a witch's house. Thankfully, there was no witch. It was just some made-up story. Lisa and I had been best friends since kindergarten. She lost her parents after high school, and I've been the only family she could count on. When I said I was visiting my uncle for Halloween, she made me bring her along. High school was memorable for us, and we promised to always be together. Here we were, five years later, and still having fun as always. Even though we were both 24, we still acted like children when it came to Halloween, period. My uncle had been staying alone for two years now, after the death of my aunt. This was my first time visiting him in two years also. He always rejected my pleas for visits. I had to put my foot down this time before he agreed. My uncle looked older than I saw him last, which was expected, but I didn't expect that the hair on his head was almost fully white. I guess the death of my aunt really affected him. We walked in through the door, and the house looked normal, at least from what I could recall. I noticed that all the pictures of my aunt were gone. They used to hang on the walls when she was alive. Did my uncle move on that fast? It didn't matter, as long as he was happy. Lisa and I were so excited to spend Halloween in a different place, and we had our plan ready on how we wanted to spend the night. My uncle showed us to our room, and we thanked him before setting up our plans. We were going to be dressed as zombies. The plan was for Lisa to act like she wanted to eat me, and I would play the part of the scared prey. In under two hours, we were done with all the dressing and the makeup that would make it look realistic. 
I was a fashion-inclined person and knew all about costumes. I worked in the fashion industry, and it has been a fulfilling job so far. We went out to the street and saw that it was already getting dark. We put our plan in motion. There were a group of guys walking towards us, and they were teenagers. Lisa roared, and I screamed before falling down, attempting to crawl away from her. The guys scattered in different directions, and Lisa and I almost choked on our laughter. It was so funny to see them run like they just witnessed the end of the world. We did the same thing for the people that came out, and we were having so much fun that I didn't want the night to end. Then I saw my uncle far off and whispered to Lisa that we should scare him. He didn't know what we were dressed like since he didn't see us before we left the house. Lisa was a bit hesitant, but I told her that it was fine. When she roared, I screamed and pretended to trip, shouting at my uncle to run. He stopped, frozen in his tracks, before saying, Elizabeth, is that you? Elizabeth was my aunt's name. Was this a joke? Why was he calling her name in the middle of the street? Lisa stopped roaring when my uncle started charging at us. I was confused also. Why wasn't he scared? He reached out where I was and looked at me with so much sorrow in his eyes that my heart broke. Then he rounded up on Lisa. You! That one word held so much anger and hatred. He punched Lisa square in the face and I watched horrified, still on the floor. Lisa fell down and was screaming. Elizabeth, don't worry, I'll save you. My aunt died from a robbery attack. A guy tried to rob her and killed her in the process. Was that what this looked like? I've been told I looked like my aunt a lot. We had the same color of hair and the same green eyes, but my uncle had never commented on it. Was that why he refused my attempts to visit him? Till I insisted that I was coming this Halloween? He straddled Lisa and punched her again. I scrambled to my feet and tried to pull him away. Uncle, it's me, Tia! He didn't respond to my yells for him to stop. He kept on punching Lisa, and I was still screaming at him to stop. Lisa had stopped screaming, and her face was a bloody mess. A couple of guys started to run towards us, probably due to my screams. They managed to pry my uncle off Lisa. Lisa! I shook her awake. She wasn't breathing. I was calling her name and screaming for her to wake up. One of the guys quickly called the ambulance, even as I tried to shake her awake. My uncle was still shouting that he wanted to protect Elizabeth, and he would kill anyone that tried to stop him. It took three of them to hold him down. I was crying so hard that I could barely see. When the ambulance finally arrived, they checked Lisa and said that she was dead. It felt like my entire world crumbled. No! I yelled. They said she'd die from strangulation. My uncle had strangled her to death. At that point, I wanted my uncle dead. I didn't care that he was family. I wanted to make him pay for what he did. Lisa was an orphan, and she was doing so well for herself. For her to suddenly die because of me was not something I was sure I could handle. My uncle went to the court and was found to be going through some weird type of mental illness. I wasn't paying attention when they mentioned it. I was busy staring at him with all the hate that I could muster. He was taken to a facility to undergo treatments. No one paid attention to me when I yelled that he was a murderer. I went back home and tried to adjust to a life without Lisa. It was tough, especially since I kept seeing her face everywhere I went to. She kept calling me to follow her. Maybe one of these days, I would. Maybe the guilt I felt would ease, and then she would forgive me.